COVID was something from the movies. Um, Asia was much more draconian with it. And so, you know, we hardly did any flying for two years. So imagine an airline with 21,000 staff, 250 aircraft at that time, um, where, you know, maybe 90% of that fleet is grounded. It was, uh, it's a nightmare scenario, but I think the worst is over now and uh, it's given us a chance to do things we probably couldn't have done before. You had to raise money. Yeah. I mean, everybody had to raise money by the billions and you didn't have government support. No. I mean, I think the, the government had so many, to be fair on governments in Southeast Asia, there were so many, so many things to sort. Um, they wanted us to fend them by themselves. And they did actually, some of the governments, Malaysia particularly, came out with a, a funding scheme that we could borrow money. But in the end, we never did. We were able to get out of it by ourselves. One of the proudest things I felt during this period was, you know, we owed a lot of people refunds and uh, we couldn't afford to pay those refunds. 92% of our passengers said, look, we'll take a credit shell. We have faith. You guys have been great and we'll take it when you come back in the form of a credit shell. So that was a big help. You've got the airlines back in the air and as best you can, safe and secure in terms of financing operations. So where do you grow the whole thing? Yeah, so, you know, we, we've decided to kind of refocus on our strength, Southeast Asia, ASEAN. 700 million people, um, enormous potential to, to grow, especially now with some of the issues with supply chain in China, etc. So my crusade now on the airline side is to knit that thing tighter together. Uh, we've taken our first ever freighter. Um, I've been in the market looking for more freighters. We love the 321 freighter, discussing with Airbus on, on that. And so those are two new businesses. And then we um, go out and try and build new airlines in the rest of Southeast Asia. Singapore, Cambodia, Vietnam are, are three that you know, are begging for an Air Asia. COVID, one of the benefits was enabling me to pivot the ship, to turn this massive ship and start looking at our data and our brand in a different way. The internet has made pricing transparent. So anyone can, is not going to come directly to Air Asia. They're going to search, search around, Google, travel, whatever. So I said to our team, let's be a travel agent. Let's be an online travel agent. Why not? We've got, we own an airline, but why can't we? So separated the company, created the super app, and I'm aiming to be uh, 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 Expedia. All these things are great, but they do distract managerial attention. Ah, That's right. the key okay. one that people have accused you of before. Yes, yes. Now, what we've created, we've changed AirAsia Group into capital A. We've put direct and distinct management in charge of each of these operations. So they, get, they benefit from the brand, they benefit from the data, uh, they benefit from the symbiosis of the, of the ecosystem, but they're separately managed. And that is the one difference. Optimistic for the summer into the rest of Absolutely. the year? Absolutely. I mean, coming to America has been fantastic. You know, I've struggled to get a flight. I've had to fly all kinds of low-cost carriers. I was on a Southwest flight. It was my highlight of this trip. I took loads of pictures. Um, you know, the speedy boarding the crew and all these things that I had talked to, you know, my mentor in many ways, Herb Kelleher. And so it was, it was great. And seeing the airports full, seeing yeah. people excited to fly again. It's the first time, Richard, that I did bitch about uh, queuing. You know, it was the first time I was thrilled to see long queues. And so America is probably about six months ahead of Southeast Asia. And so that was a great sense of feeling and talking to the other airline CEOs in, in around, they all had a bit of optimism. Oil, that, that's such a secondary thing to me now because, you know, when you can't fly, you know, the two things in my life that I've never been able to fully control. You can do whatever you want in your football club, but it's up to those 11 dudes <laughs> to uh, perform, right? And you're sitting there and you can't do much about it. I was so helpless because you can't, you can't do anything. Oil, wars, as long as I can fly, that's the biggest thing I learned.